When the show come on, you like? I don't like that bullshit. He already started. I don't know why the hell you telling me. Then it's Berlin. That show, mama, you know what I'm talking about. Mama, that go that man, he just talk a lot of shit. She be up late at night, tuning into all his hits. See my grandmama, I hate him, and my mama, and my TD getting mad. Posting comments like we watching real TV. Mama, that go that man, yelling from that nigga, what? He's successful attorney on the two, be turning up. We be turning up, turning up, we turning up, yeah. We be turning up, yeah, yeah, we turning up. It's that real spit, like some barbershop talk. Except it's real black men that be walking with me. Oh, oh. Intelligent, well versed. Sometimes we might curse what well, we cuss a lot. Just like these lovely ladies fuss a lot. Ooh. Switch it up, tell these skinny soakers gotta pick it up. Move along, me and you ain't brothers, not to woo my mom. Cross examination on in the, in the chat room. All the trolls with the disrespect, we in the back room. Huffing and you sucking up the air like a vacuum. Daddy disappeared, told your baby I'll be back. Soon. I just represent us cause the system can't afford it I'm your homie, I'm your brother, sometimes a court appointed Anointed, know you hate it, but I give you fair chosen Just like Jesus in the house of God Kicking chairs over, suit and tie soldier Get the cold shoulder, the hate and you talking Not a fucking stain on me, watch your dame homie I got that change on me, black rich, I don't give a shit Bet your dame want me Mama that go that man, he just talk a lot of shit He be up late at night, tuning into all all his hits, see my grandma might hate him. That's my mother business. You ain't got a goddamn thing to do with it. Me and my mama and my TD getting mad. Posting comments like we watching real TV. Mama, that go that man. He talk a lot of shit. He be up late at night, tuning into all his hits. See my grandma might hate him. And my mama and my TD getting mad. Posting comments like we watching real TV. Mama, that go that man. And for you men out there, you simps, who are defending this degenerate behavior by black women, because to you, the black woman is queen, understand that you are nothing more than an enabler. You are her heroin dealer. You are the one that protects her and feeds her this, 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 this degenerate uh, 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 drug this, this, uh, and allows for this immoral character, which is undermining our nation of black people. And you too deserve what she gets, chastisement. But because you're a man and you're in the way of progress, you are our enemy. Because anyone who is in the way of black men correcting the bad behavior of black women, you, sir, are an adversary. Now, I understand there are a lot of black men who have daughters. And your natural inclination is to protect your daughter. But if your daughter is exhibiting poor behavior, and you are not correcting that whore behavior and thus intensifying the problems that we have here in the United States, then you're an inadequate father. You're a weak man and you didn't deserve to be a father in the first place. More importantly, you're not operating by the code that you need to operate by and you need to be checked because you're out of line. You got a new group of black men coming along. All these simps running around here, running amok. All these son husbands. It ain't just these single mothers' faults. Happy wife, no. Happy life. Y'all heard that before. That's the most simplest thing you can hear say. Yeah. Welcome to Simp University. Uh-huh. That's right. We got an all-star lineup. Yeah. We got Dr. Um, 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 uh, Simp Jackson on the drum. Oh, Johnson. Yeah. We got... Doctor Boogity 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 Voice Watkins on the tambourines. We got Derek, the Janky Jack Jackson singing back up. And this is the Simp Academy, baby. Shake it for a simp, shake it for a simp. Uh huh. 
Shake it for a simp, shake it for a simp. Uh -huh. She just want that money anyway. She just want it. He don't give a fuck, he gon' pay. So he gon' pay it, baby. Shake it for a simp, shake it for a simp. Uh -huh. Shake it for a simp, shake it for a simp. Uh -huh. She just want that money anyway. He don't care. He don't give a fuck, he gon' pay. It. That's it. Shake it for a simp, shake it for a simp. Uh. Worth the pimp, see, I walk with a limp, uh, uh This is for the donation niggas who got food Been a decade running and still No school and no class You keep asking for more cash yeah. Academy growing, pucker up and kiss ass These doctor, imposter, homie, you check the roster Black women panda, sounds like you a scammer Yeah We lace them up like them Chuck Tennis. Chuck Tennis. We don't love these hoes. They screaming, fuck Dennis. Fuck Dennis. We holding court. Ain't no love in it. Rather be the judge in it. Just as fuck you fuck niggas. Check game. Your mama gave you niggas all a simp chip. Now you simping A1 game all on this simp shit. High degree having nigga talking this trick shit. What you gonna be teaching at that school, nigga? Pimp shit? This is for the simps at the academies Listen to your mama pray Fuck what your daddy say yeah, 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 yeah. Nigga, you a simp yeah. Sam, Sam, Sam. Nigga, you a simp yeah. This is for the simps at the academies Listen to your mama pray Fuck what your daddy say yeah, 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 yeah. My nigga, you a simp yeah. My nigga, you a simp yeah. Shake it for a simp Shake it for a simp uh -huh. Shake it for a simp Shake it for a simp uh -huh. She just want that money anyway She just want it He don't give a fuck, he gon' pay so He gon' pay it, baby Shake it for a simp Shake it for a simp uh -huh. Shake it for a simp Shake it for a simp uh -huh. She just want that money anyway She, she don't just care. want it, yeah. He don't give a fuck, he gon' pay it, baby. You niggas is soft as Wonder Bread, baby You worse than King Kong trying to save mayonnaise, man. Sipping is like Kool-Aid. And you niggas add extra sugar, sugar. Cause you sipping niggas never had that booger, booger. How can a rotten bitch raise a forgotten trick that turned into a switch hitter? You more concerned with alphabets and crayon colors. I'm not that nigga, and I'm definitely not that brother. So when the kingdom falls, and the she-heathen no longer pick up your call, and when we leave you simps swinging from these salty balls, let's believe I got my attorney named Dennis Sperling on speed dial, and in the meanwhile, while simping ain't in my pimping, do not shake shit for me, baby. But you can uh, shake it for a simp, shake it for a simp, shake it for a shake it for a simp, shake it for a simp, shake it, shake it. She just want that money anyway. She just want that money. He don't give a fuck. He gon' pay. He gon' pay it, baby. Now shake it for a simp, shake it for a simp, shake it, shake it, shake it for a simp, shake it for a simp, shake it, shake it. She just want that money anyway. She just want the brain. He don't give a fuck. He gon' pay. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's up, what's up, what's up? Welcome, welcome, welcome to the broadcast. Shout out to my man, Urban Eagle. The Blizzard King is back. You right about that, baby. Shout out to, to you for being the first person to contribute to the Super Chat. And uh, I'd like to welcome everybody here. My name is Dennis Sperling. I am an attorney. I'm a podcaster. I'm an author, TV show executive producer. As you guys know, um, I am um, I am a proud father. I think that's my most important title. And uh, at some point in the very near future, I'll be getting married again. And I'm looking forward to that when my beautiful fiance gets out of law school. And you know what I'm saying? We're going to move on, probably have a couple more kids. A little bit about me, for you guys who don't know, you folks who've never read my books, Rules to Live By. And thank you guys for 
purchase in these books, man. I, it's, it's really good to get out. Those of you guys who read them, you know that it's not just my story. It, this is our story. This is probably something like a modern day version of, uh, of, of it, it's, it tells a story of generation X really. It does. It tells a story of the brothers who came up the, the, the late baby boomers, the early generation X and the early millennials. That's our story. And I think in years to come, people will rediscover this work and say, wow, this dude really, this dude really understood what we were dealing with. And, um, but what you learn a lot about me, I guess the most important thing you learn about me, give me a minute, is that um, I'm, from, I'm from South Central Los Angeles, you know, and um, it's just a different kind of place to have grown up in. It's a, it's a hostile place. You know, it's a place where at the time period I grew up, you really didn't expect to live past 24 years old, you see, but more importantly, you are so close to what would be your enemies that you just get used to being around your enemies. And uh, it just really doesn't matter if they're there or not. If it's your time to go, it's your time to go. And I think that uh, that puts me in a unique position. It puts me in a unique position to have already faced the fear of death, already faced the fear of not being liked, always already having faced the fear of being the most hated. And so that doesn't bother me anymore. The reason I can tell the truth and the reason I'm not afraid to speak the truth when it's necessary is because I'm not here to be liked. I'm not here to be loved. I'm only here to speak the truth. I'm one of those individuals who feels as though I'm here on borrowed time. And uh, thank God I've been able to enjoy my life and I'm, I'm getting up in age now. But uh, there was a time where I didn't think I was going to live just like I didn't, just like many of the, my other contemporaries that I grew up with. But nevertheless, it puts me in a position to, uh, <laughs> Uh, my fiance just, just brought me a nice hot cup of tea because she could hear my nose and stuff. He said, shout out to, to the missus. She is, uh, she can fight real good too, man. She got that, she got that uh, jujitsu thing popping, man. She won a gold medal in the competition. So, uh, you know, it, 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 whatever, let me get back to my conversation. So again, it puts me in a position where I don't mind being hated if it means I'm speaking the truth. I don't mind walking amongst my enemies because I'm just not afraid to die. And, you know, and I'm, I'm not afraid of the shame. I'm not af afraid of anything. This is just who I am. And so, uh, and I think that's why the fellas who come in here night after night to see me, <laughs> a background that doesn't change, no frills, no thrills, uh, and, and I think that's, I think that's why you all like me because I speak the truth to you. Now, the other thing that makes me unique is I'm probably one of the most educated people on social media. Not only am I an attorney, but I have an LLM, which is a master's degree in law, which actually gives me, um, well, gives me the credentials necessary to teach law school. More important from 2010 to 20 was 2010 to 2014 I worked towards my master's degree in biology along with two PhDs one in environmental molecular toxicology and another one in environmental science these very complicated things nevertheless that puts me square in the position of being what we would call an educated person or an intellectual or a degree person with three degrees and nearly 120 credits towards uh, a PhD, that puts me square in that category. So what does that mean? That means even if you might not necessarily agree with me, you still may give me the benefit of the doubt just because I'm a degreed person, I'm an educated person, and you're relying on the fact that no one would give me a degree unless I knew what I was talking about. And 
I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I appreciate that, and I don't betray that. Unfortunately, unfortunately, there are those among us who will rely upon their degrees to then go traipse off into other areas that are not their specialty and have you believe in the rhetoric that they spew. And you just got to rely on the fact that they have some letters in front of their name or behind their name. And what happens is eventually folks realize, nah, that, that doesn't sound right. And then after a while, it gets so disingenuous. You're like, I can't even believe anything this person is saying. So here's something I want to share with you, okay? And you all know this man, all right? Now, welcome to the broadcast. Uh, I want you to listen to this. In Jacksonville, North Carolina. I'm in Jacksonville, Florida right now, but I used to live in Jacksonville, North Carolina. I'm in Jacksonville, Florida right now, but I used to live in Jacksonville, North Carolina. And when I was in the third grade in Jacksonville, North Carolina, nine years old, eight years old, me and my mother were looking out the window and we saw a UFO. We said, is that a UFO? I said, now that might be a plane. Maybe that's the military. I want you to let that sink in, okay? This almost 50-year-old man is saying that when he was in the third grade, when he lived down south, he, he and his mother saw a UFO. Okay, cool. Now, in the third grade, what are you, nine years old? Okay, that might be something you saw. I want you to continue listening to this. Now, this is uh, one of our learned, educated, degreed, intellectuals in the black community known as Dr. Umar Johnson. Let's keep listening. Harry expedition, military air. It was a UFO. So we watching this UFO, it kept swirling around. So it was way up in the sky though, but it had all these lights and it was going in a circle. And my mom said, okay, it's time for you to go to bed. So I go to bed, but I'm not sleeping. You know how you laying down in your bed before you fall asleep? Jacksonville, North Carolina. And the next thing you know, this yellow thing walked into my room. It was about three feet tall, shaped like a man, but no features. No, it was just pure yellow light, shaped like a man with no features, pure yellow light. And I'm scared as shit. I want to call my mom or my dad, but I'm scared. All right. So the brother is saying, now, here's the thing. He put this on social media. This is one of our intellectuals. This is one of our black intellectuals. This man is telling us that when he was in the third grade, he and his mom saw a UFO in the sky. Okay, maybe you did. I don't know. You're a kid at this time. You're nine years old. And now you're telling us as you were laying in your bed, trying to go to sleep, you saw a UFO. Okay? Now, before you get on the internet and tell people you saw a UFO, why don't you use what you know as a psychologist, as a trained person, and say, well, you know what? Maybe I was just a kid, and maybe I was having a dream. Maybe that's what it was. Why are you here telling us, one of our intellectuals, that you were having a, 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 a close encounter of the fourth kind? Okay? Why are you telling us that? And the fact that you have a doctorate behind your name, there are some people who will believe this story from a person who's, regurg who's recalling something that happened allegedly when he was a third grader. You see? Now, if this was just some dude off the street hanging at a liquor store, you might be like, ah, whatever. But when you have our intellectual saying this, our educated leader saying this somebody type bs in the chat room because we just saw a ufo like two hours ago and this yellow this little yellow man stocky too he was built like he was a bodybuilder but all you could see was yellow light in the shape of a man no eyes no nose no mouth all right so <laughs> that that is one of our learned doctors he is often of the opinion that the black woman can do no wrong we've seen him 
plenty of times. He has a school allegedly somewhere in, I don't know, I guess Philadelphia, Baltimore, or something like that. He's been trying to build for the past 14 years. And on top of that, recently he went on a podcast and somebody typed brick lady in the chat room, somebody type brick face or brick lady in the chat room. Recently, this man who was a staunch defender of the brick lady who about five months ago swore up and down that some black man hit her in the face with a brick and uh, there were other black men around her and those black men didn't do anything about it. And he got on the internet and he railed about how black men should defend black women and how this happens and it's always happening. And, and you know, and then recently when he was called out for it, and I don't want to put the video up because it's not my channel, he basically said, well, I'm not, even though if it comes to find out that I'm a, that, that she was, a, he said, I don't know if she's lying or not. Even though the HPD thinks she's lying, Okay, the HPD seems to think she's lying. He doesn't know if she's lying. But uh, even if she was lying, he's not going to recant or apologize what he said. And so in response to that, there was a young brother who was asked, and this brother, and you look at him, I want you to hear what the little brother said in response to Dr. Umar Johnson not even being willing to apologize for the harmful rhetoric he spewed about black men, Okay. Let's listen. More saying that, you know, Eminem, he can't be a goat in hip hop because he's white. Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, Steph Curry. These names get brought up when we talk about the goats. Those are the goats. And guess what? I well, let me change the context. This is something to do with Eminem, but the rationale is s similar. I want you to hear what the brother says about this dis disingenuous rhetoric that he's heard Dr. Umar Johnson spit. This is in related to the actual um, Eminem controversy, whether or not Eminem could be the greatest rapper of all time, whatever you like, let's just keep listening. But all them people got in common, they all black. But James Naismith was a white man. A white man created basketball. The root of what Dr. Umar was, was trying to talk about was saying, yo, if you didn't create something, if your people didn't create something, then your people can't come along and be the best of this if you didn't create it. I think that's the root of what he was saying. So I think Dr. Umar means well oftentimes, but I do think that in an effort to be so pro-black, sometimes uh, you sacrifice some uh, common sense for the sake of sound bites, you know? All right, so now you got this young brother who's of seemingly, definitely doesn't sound like he has a PhD, telling you that one of your black intellectuals, not only is he disingenuine, but he lacks common sense. This is someone who speaks for us. You understand what I'm saying? Let's let the oh, and, and, and what sounds good to people. You know, I think I think that. And, and I say that with love to Dr. I'm telling you what sounds good to people. This is what this is what they're saying. So as a person who is degreed and educated, right? If you have one of your own out there being chastised by the public. And the public is saying, yeah, I know you're degree, but you sound disingenuous. You don't sound like you even have common sense. And you're just saying this to try to push a line of thinking. What does that say? Now, it's one thing for the folks amongst us who are basically the normal, regular folks who may or may not have any sort of education. It's another level for the professional levels and the folks with PhDs to be out here spitting this rhetoric. And we've heard Dr. Umar Johnson say some very divisive things about black men. And black women have taken that and run with it. He does, at no point do I ever see him or Dr. Boyce Watkins or uh, some of these other folks out there putting any fault on black women. And there's a reason for that, okay? And when they do that in that capacity and they rely on their PhDs and their doctor de degrees, it's a problem. Now, what's happening now, okay? Cause we don't get to the meat of the broadcast. What's happening now is you see a backlash to the simps. You see a backlash to the simps of all 
uh, of persuasion uh, of, of all educational levels, whether it's a pookie level uh, simp or a PhD level simp, the simps are catching hell. All right. Now, what I want to do right now is I'm going to share with you this video, which I was I thought was awesome. OK, take a look. In 2024, is that men? And you guys know this fella. I think I've heard of him before, but let's keep listening. Fair Toxic use. men have made you think that you are a bad person for walking away from bullshit. He's going to make you think That's not the saddest part of 2024, son. The saddest part is that you are still out here in these sipping streets with this bullshit. We're not doing this no more. Shut your bitch ass up mm. with this sipping shit. And I want you to listen to the language, okay? You heard what that brother said? Shut your bitch ass up. Somebody type shut your bitch ass up in the chat room. What happens when black men start saying shut your bitch ass up to other black men in their face to face? Come on, somebody call it. Somebody, are y'all with me? I need to make sure you fellas are with me. Let's, let's talk serious now. Somebody said them are fighting words. What else? If somebody says, shut your bitch ass up, that for those of you all who are ebonically inclined for my non-melanated followers, if a black man tells you to shut your bitch ass up, that is a call to violence. <laughs> you understand? It's time to knuckle up. It's time to throw them bows. It's trying to slang them things. You understand? This is what I want you to understand. This is the tone and tenor of the average black man when it comes to simps. You understand me? Now I want you to listen to this brother right now. There was a time in which for the past 40 years, the brothers would have no problem setting aside, they'd ignore this. I'm gonna let you listen to this brother again, all right? This is the tone and tenor, okay? This is gonna be a special kind of broadcast tonight. Keep listening. Still out here in these sipping streets with this bullshit. We not doing this no more. Shut your bitch ass up with this sipping shit in 2024. Yeah. We all about empowering men, making men better. We not gonna keep dragging men through the dirt to make women feel good about themselves. We are all about empowering men. We not gonna keep dragging men through the dirt. We're not gonna keep making dragging men through the dirt to make women feel better about their decisions. Really, the brother meant their poor outcomes. Do you feel the tone and tenor? Now, at some point, when you got something like this emerging on the internet, that means that there is a large contingent of black men who feel this way. And this is what I want you to alert you of. I often have time, I can feel it when, when, this, when it's hot. You understand me? Let me tell you, for you guys who've been incarcerated, we about to have a riot on the yard. That's what I'm trying to tell you. There's about to be a house cleaning going on. And it's not me. I'm just pointing it out. This is, this is the tone and tenor. The internet, social media, this is the impulse. This is the brains. These are the inner thoughts of what people feel. And when you start seeing them manifest, you, you have to pay attention to it. That's why the FBI, the CIA, most police forces make sure that they are watching the Internet because this is where people reveal their inner, inner thoughts. And you can pre predict the movements that are coming based on what's popping up on the Internet. And what you have coming is an ending of the simp era. Let's keep listening. The playing field is even, nigga. I don't know where you live in that, son. Yeah. Women are just as bad as men, and we don't need no more bitch-ass niggas Ooh. out here Caping for women, son. Oh, did you? Okay, somebody type bitch ass nigga in the chat room. Somebody type bitch. This, these are these are fighting words. Do you hear how? Do you hear that? This is not me saying I don't know who the brother is. You can look at his TikTok down there at the bottom. But this is what I'm trying to tell you. It's we're getting to a point where it's going to be dangerous for these simps to be keep talking in public. You got folks undermining them. The man can't even say, I, I mean, I'm just telling you, man, you know, you see, huh? I'm just telling y'all, this is what's, 
going on. This is where we are. Black men are tired of being lied on. And, and we're really tired of black men lying on us. And there's a reason why. Because at the end of the day, we know they're being disingenuous. That's the problem. Let's keep listening to the brother. We got enough platforms, enough dudes, enough women out here constantly shitting on men. Mm -hmm. We about to start empowering men and get you simp niggas the fuck up out of here, son. Woo! He said we about to start getting you simp niggas the F up out of here, son. What does that mean? <laughs> what does it mean when a black man says we about to start getting you simps up out of here? That's my question. What does that mean? Huh? Let's translate that for the people of the, the, the lactose, uh, I'm sorry, the, the melanin impaired. What does that mean? When a black man start talking about, we gonna start getting you simps up out of here. And I need my East Coast people, when they had a son on the end of that, <laughs> when they start, I'm thinking New Jack City, when they put a son on the end of that, yo son, we start about to start getting you, what does that mean? This is not me saying this, I predicted it. I told y'all some years ago that this environment is not conducive for, you know, men to continue talking about men and still walking around in public. See, all those people that hate me three or four years ago, they're starting to come around and say, damn, Uncle D speak the truth. At the end of the day, Uncle, Uncle D stood up for Kevin Samuels and Kevin Samuels was trying to help black people. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, Uncle D got kids and he take care of his kids. He take care of his family. He don't commit no crimes. He always speaking up to us. He always defending us. And yes, yeah, a lot of people don't, don't like that. But when I started 15 years ago on, 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 on Facebook, it was very disfavorable. But see, now when I was the only one out there say, hey, all we do on this page is defend black men. Even when I came to this YouTube thing only a short uh, in 2020, I was one of the first ones to say this whole page is set up to let black men speak and to defend the reputation of black men. And now what? Four years later, we got a lot of folks out there defending black men. You understand me? So what does that mean? That means that I am on the right side. Why is that? Because I speak truth. You see, I'm not out here lying to y'all. I'm not out here making it up. I'm not out here doing that. I'm genuine with how I feel and I mean it. And it serves my interest to protect the image and reputation of black men and not, not let nobody uh, poop crap on our reputations. That's what I'm trying to tell y'all. Now, this is, the, this is the environment that we're in now. It's 2024. What? Shut your bitch ass up, nigga. Woo. Uh, and he threw an N-word at the end of it. Brothers don't call each other the N-word like that. That's an insult. When, you, when, you, when brothers start calling you the N-word in that tone, that's not a term of endearment. This, this is a call to arms. This is, this is a hostile threat that you see going on. Nevertheless... Um, welcome to the broadcast. Let's go ahead and get this thing cracking. Let's go ahead. Big shout out to Urban Eagle. The Blizzard King is back. Thank you so much, brother. International Quiet Storm Support Blackmail Media Arc. I signed that purple work you sent a few days back, patiently waiting for the next step. We'll be in contact soon. I'll be having a meeting soon via Zoom. We're all going to sit down and talk. Kosher clinician. Big shout out to you, bro. Send me them clips from your show to critique. Okay, no problem, bro. Clip clips from your show. Whatever clips you want, man, you can have them, bro. And Telvin King, I'm going to need another uh, 16 Super Chats. Y'all make sure y'all make that happen so I don't have to interrupt this broadcast. Well, anyway, um, welcome, welcome, welcome. I want to have a conversation with you all, and I promise that you're going to learn something tonight, okay? You're going to learn something. And I want to first wish you all good evening to the ladies and the gentlemen who are watching. And I appreciate you for joining me tonight uh, or morning, wherever you are around the world. Thank you so much. Um, but we're, we're at the dawn of 2024. It, it's a pivotal moment. And it's crucial we address some, some things that have been weighing heavily on many of our hearts and minds. It, it's not just the battles, okay, we're up against the shape our era, but rather how we choose to face them. And therein lies a profound tragedy we need to tackle directly. Now let's get something straight. The real tragedy isn't just the external pressures and the toxic narratives being spun 
about black men. Okay? That's not it. Okay? In fact, uh, that era needs to end. We're drawing a line in the sand today to declare enough is enough. Somebody type enough is enough in the chat room. We're not going to let these misguided behaviors and these people who preach division divide us. Let's use 2024 as a turning point. It's time we reclaim our rightful place in this world, along with our reputation and our good name. Our mission is to empower each black man to elevate his life, to stand with an unshakable pride and purpose that nobody can strip away. Now, there are those who seek to lower our worth to raise the status of black women. Challenges and shortcomings aren't exclusive to any gender. Black women, just like black men, are human beings. And with our set of flaws and virtues, just like they have them. Nevertheless, it's time we move beyond the outdated practice of blindly defending black women who are wrong as two left shoes. And we can't keep defending them just because of their gender. Our society, black society, is flooded with platforms and voices quick to point the fingers at black men, often unjustly without considering the full context. There exists a contingent of black men who, driven by opportunism, opportunism, uh, they've chosen to exploit the complexities of our black relationships for their own monetary gain. These people are aware of the financial and social incentives, and, and, and they've engaged in, in, in this disturbing practice of demeaning black men to curry favor with black women. They publish books. They host conferences and they position themselves as allies in the fight for, uh, uh, for black women or gender equality or whatever it is they call it, all the while knowing that their actions contribute to a deeper divide. These black men are in effect predators. They prey on the goodwill of black women and black men who genuinely are interested in protecting black women and, and, and they twist it to their advantage. They stroke the flames of the score of this so-called gender war, creating an environment for their exploitation. Certain black men unfairly blame other black men for a myriad of societal issues absolving black women of responsibilities. For instance, and y'all have heard this before, the rising out of wedlock birth rate. It's simplistic and unfair to lay the blame solely on the feet of black men without acknowledging the autonomy and decision making of black women. Similarly, the narrative around single motherhood often unfairly targets black men, ignoring the myriad of socioeconomic and personal factors at play. Divorce is another area where stereotypes paint men in general, but black men in particular as the main culprits disregarding the mutual effort required to make a marriage work. In the realm of domestic responsibilities and emotional availability, black men are often criticized for perceived shortcomings without considering the societal pressures that shape their behaviors. So the expectation for black men to be the primary financial providers overlooks the value of dual income households, right? and the significance of black women's economic empowerment. Think about that. On one hand, you're supposed to be the provider, but it seems like the only time they want 50-50 is when you're in divorce court. You see? Even the education of, of boys, under black boys, underachievement is sometimes seen as a black male issue rather than a systematic one requiring comprehensive solutions. The issue of violence, and you know what I'm talking about, DV, is too often framed in a way that labels black men as the sole perpetrators, ignoring the crimes that black women commit and the broader societal context and instances where men are themselves victims of black women. 
even as far as sexual health and contraception. Responsibilities are frequently placed entirely on black men, overlooking the importance of shared responsibility in relationships. And some of these black men hold other black men accountable for a wide range of societal problems. And in doing so, they purposely exempt black women from any responsibility. And this rhetoric that they spit, it, it has unintended but profound consequences. It leads to a belief, a belief that women should accept no fault. Somebody type no fault in the chat room. <laughs> Somebody type no fault in the chat room. It leads them to believe that women should accept no fault for their actions. And what this does, it perpetuates a cycle of mistakes, misunderstandings, missed opportunities, and missed opportunities for growth. Like the scapegoats of old, black men have become the modern day witches, at times vilified beyond reason. And this cycle, what this does is this cycle has a compounding effect on black society. As mistakes go unacknowledged and uncorrected, they multiply, exacerbating the divide between the genders. The more severe and perceived the divide becomes, the more intense the blame and hatred and disdain towards black men is, further entrenching the, the, the gender divide. What I'm saying is, the more mistakes these black American women make, the more children they have out of wedlock. The, and, and, and then they're not forced to take the blame for it the more problems we have. And the more problems they have, the more they blame black men. So, you know, it just gets worse. Now see, the thing is the architects of the score, these black men who exploit these divisions for personal gain or ideological fervor, they're reminiscent of historical figures who fan flames of conflict for their own ends, just as um, and they do it for past. They did it in the past. Uh, fear, division, manipulation. They're just modern day agitators. They use gender, the gender discord to sow di uh, discontent and disunity. These people, and I want y'all to hear me on this. These people are the true adversaries in the quest for balance and, under, and understanding and heal black society. And their tactics, their tactics don't aim to heal or bridge gaps. They don't, that's not what they're doing. They're, they're, they're there to just set them up for personal and political gain. They're the merchants of division. Somebody type that in the chat room. Merchants of Division. Dr. Boyce Watkins. They sell discord at the cost of our collective progress. Dr. Umar Johnson. Mm? Derek Jackson. Mm? Name the rest of them. Their behavior doesn't go unnoticed. There's a significant and growing number of black men and women who are waking up to this manipulation. Shout out to the Crimson Cure. These opportunistic men should be aware that their actions will not be met with passive acceptance indefinitely. Instead, they risk becoming targets of their own discord, the same discord that they help promote. The frustration and anger they generate among those who are tired of their divisive tactics could very well result in disfavor and sadly, in some cases, even physical retaliation. Did you hear how that brother was talking? Did you hear how this brother was talking? It's not a threat, but a warning. Both black men and black women are tired of this insincere 
divisive rhetoric. The time for exploiting the dynamics that exist between black men and black women for personal gain is got to come to an end. I mean, for the safety and well-being of everyone in black society involved. Those men who engage in this opportunistic behavior, they need to reconsider their actions. So the issue at hand is the manipulation and the exploitation of societal divisions amongst black folks for personal gain. It's a practice as old as society itself. Nevertheless, those people who practice that, inevitably, there's a day of reckoning. A day of reckoning for those who practice this type of deception. The history is replete with examples of thought leaders and influencers and opportunistic type people who've sown seeds of discord among people only to find themselves ultimately rejected or worse by their very societies they sought to manipulate. <laughs> Consider this. Somebody type, you're going to learn something tonight in the chat room. Some, somebody type, learn you in the chat room. You're going to learn something tonight in the chat room. Somebody type that. That's what we do here. Somebody type Julius Caesar in the chat room. Somebody type Julius Caesar in the chat room. Somebody type the fall of Rome in the chat room. And I want you to consider the fall of the Roman Republic. Where the political figure Julius Caesar exploited the divisions within Rome to amass power. Caesar aligned himself with two of Rome's most powerful figures, Pompey the Great and Crassus, to create an unofficial political alliance known as the First Triumvirate. And this alliance allowed him to exploit the rivalries and divisions within the Roman political elite. And what this did for him was it helped him secure uh, significant legislative and military support. The Gaelic Wars over there in Gaul. His military campaigns in what we would call modern day France, Belgium, from 58 BC to 50 BC, was a masterclass in leveraging military success to build political power. And he did it by exploiting the divisions amongst the Gaelic tribes. Uh, and, and Caesar not only expanded the Roman Empire, but he also filled Rome's coffers and raised his own profile as a military leader. He made a lot of money, made him look good. In 49 BC, Caesar's decision to cross the Rubicon River with his army and march on Rome, which is something that Roman armies were never allowed to do, but he did it anyway. It was a direct challenge to the authority of the Senate and his political rivals, particularly Pompey. And this act exploited divisions between uh, the popularists, the People's Party, which supported Caesar, and the Optimites, the conservative Senate faction. And that led to civil war. And that eventually paved the way for Caesar's dictatorship. You understand what I'm saying? And there are some other things that he did, and I don't have to go into all that, but for the most part, the lesson that you need to learn is that the actions of Caesar exploited existing divisions within the Roman society and the political system. And it allowed him to amass power and ultimately transform the Roman Republic into a framework that allowed the emergence of the Roman Empire under his adopted heir, uh, Augustus. But the thing that you have to understand is that after all that manipulation, all those civil wars, eventually Caesar's own assassination by those who feared, the, who feared the consequences of his divisiveness. In other words, 
you're doing too much. And here's another one. You're doing too much. You divide. This is you. You reap what you sow. Another person here in the United States, Joseph McCarthy. He led what is called the Red Scare in the United States. Some of you guys may have heard this name. Some of you may haven't. But he claimed to have a list of communists working within the U.S. government. Somebody typed the deep state in the chat room. The thing is, he very rarely provided concrete evidence to support his accusations. This tactic of making broad, unsubstantiated claims, it created an atmosphere of fear and suspicion. Isn't that what's going on in the black community right now? Y'all don't trust black women, do you? The black folks in black society, you don't trust black women, do you, fellas? And black women don't trust you. That's what happens when you have somebody uh, 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 telling you the enemy is amongst you. Another thing he did, he, he had public hearings as his, uh, using his role as chairman of the Senate, chairman of the Senate Permanent Subcommittee on Investigations. And these hearings were highly publicized on TV. That's back when they only had three channels. So everybody was watching. And he accused government officials, military personnel, civilians of being communists or communist sympathizers, often with little regard for due process. What you got to understand is at that time, America had just used the atomic bomb on Nagasaki and Hiroshima. And we found out that Russia had that military technology. They had the atomic bomb technology. And we were in fear. It was called the Cold War. We were afraid. We thought they were going to come over and blow us up. And so everybody was a communist. Everybody was afraid. This is the environment that we lived in. Another thing he did, guilt by association. His supporters often employed the tactic of guilt by association, suggesting anyone who had any leaks, any links to, to a leftist or socialist group was a security risk. Just like y'all, any of y'all who support a brother who's speaking the truth like Kevin Samuels, you must be the enemy, right? You see? But this is what he sold. Now, again, his tactics, and I'm talking about Joseph McCarthy, his tactics during this period left a lasting mark on American society. Society. And it contributed to the culture of suspicion and fear that affected countless lives and undermined the principles of fairness and justice. The reason that you don't trust your government, it started with McCarthy. This is where all the conspiracy theories came up. Before that, we trusted our government. We trusted our government to do what was in our best interest. It was after him and then the Kennedy assassination, we stopped trusting the government. And you're still living with that legacy now. Now, the thing is, Kevin McCarthy's tactics eventually led to his censure by the Senate. Basically, they repudiated him. And thereafter, the public and his peers turned against him in the climate of fear he created. They start being afraid of him. So there is an outcome to this. Those of you all, you simps out there who are preaching division and hate, Eventually, it's going to come back to bite you. Here's another one. Recently, the Arab Spring. You guys remember that? It was a series of anti-government protests and uprisings that swept across much of the Arab world in the 2010s. It demonstrated the power of the people in rejecting their leaders who had long exploited their societal divisions. Many of the regimes in the Middle East and North Africa, that region, they use harsh tactics to suppress any form of dissent, including censorship, imprisonment, torture, extrajudicial killings, all that sort of stuff. They control the narrative through the media. 
You can't say nothing wrong about them, right? Or you're going to come up wrong. They suppress dissent. Like can't, it, that would be the equivalent of cancel, cancel culture here. They exploited the, 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 the ethnic and sectarian differences, just like these simps exploit the differences between men and women. You understand? Nevertheless, you see what happened. These practices created a fertile ground for widespread unrest and the uprising. The autocrats across the Middle East and North Africa, they were ousted by these folks who were fed up with the manipulation and division. People don't like to be divided like that. And my thing is that these historical examples, they serve as a stark warning to you men, you black men who seek to keep black society divided. The manipulation of gender dynamics, the exploitation of uh, societal rifts between black men and black women for personal and financial gain. It's a path fraught with peril. And the growing frustration and anger amongst black men and black women who are tired of these divisive tactics. They threaten to turn divisively against you all who propagate this discord. This is not a threat, but it's a reminder of a historical pattern. Somebody type historical pattern in the chat room, a historical pattern that repeats itself. Time and time again, black men and black women in particular are awakening to the realization that unity and, and sincerity are only sustainable, or that's our only sustainable path forward. Look at all these immigrants coming up to Chicago and coming up to New York, taking our jobs, occupying our areas. And this government, this nation, who we've gave so much to over the past, uh, since its inception, even before its inception, is willing to throw us out, and we're divided. So the era of exploiting our divisions for personal gain is drawn to a close. So to you all, you simps, who are engaged in this opportunistic behavior, let this be a moment of reflection. Consider those in history who chose the path of division and look where it led them. The fabric of black society is resilient, but is woven from strands of trust and mutual respect. And once it's torn, it's not easily mended. And this is a fabric that couldn't be torn by slavery, Jim Crow, over-incarceration, uh, over or the drug epidemic. But here you come with this gender divide and this pitting black women against black men unfairly for your own personal gain. And you have managed to do more damage than the Ku Klux Klan and the white knights have been able to do for hundreds of years. Now, specifically, and this is what I want to get at, and I want to explain to you why, just in case y'all haven't caught up. I am an educated person. I am what you would consider one of those from the academy. But I am very careful at what I say. Now, I will call out bad behavior, but I'm very careful to distinguish between the degenerate behavior of black men and black women that I reject and the good black women, and the good black men. Remember, I'm the one that got on here and ended the Pookie and Ray Ray Wars. You remember that? You remember when the Pookie and Ray Rays would say, yeah, you intellectual lames, y'all just, you know, you educated lames, you just jealous of us? And then I got on here and said I would have no problem lining them up and putting a bullet right between their heads. Remember that? And they was like, damn. 
You ain't heard educated, lame, Pookie and Ray Ray Wars no more, have you? You ain't heard that. Because they've never heard somebody say that and mean it. That's how I feel about degenerate behavior. The brothers fell in line. Like, okay, we got a new, we got somebody else talking. We ain't never heard one like that before. And it all went away. Notice that. Do we even talk about educated lanes versus Pookie and Ray Rays anymore? Go back to that date. Go back to that date where I was on Mumi Obsidian Ali's page, Obsidian's page. And he had me on. I talked about that. Ended the whole thing instantaneously. And since that time point, those of us who are degenerates, they, they just said, well, let me go ahead and fall in line. Because they respect the honesty and the strength. And the truth is, many of those men knew that they, that they were in dereliction of their duty. They know that they're in violation. And there's nobody there to protect them and tell them, yeah, you, you good. Once you start speaking to them the truth, they fall in line. But as long as you got a group of people, i.e. black women, and you got these defenders over here telling them that everything they do is the fault of somebody else, that's a problem. Now, add on the fact that that person who's telling them has this alphabet in front of their name or alphabets behind their name. PhD, SCD, MS, ESQ, LXYZ. What does that do? Well, I'll tell you what it is. It's one of the most treacherous of contributors to this societal discord that we have. Because, see, those people are cloaked in the prestige of academia and intellectualism. And they misuse their credentials to endorse and spread falsehoods about black men. These so-called thought leaders and intellectuals adorned with degrees and academic honors. They claim to advocate for the good of the black nation or to defend the vulnerable women. Yet, in reality, they engage in disingenuous manipulation of facts. They don't aim to enlighten us. They aim to inflame this ongoing conflict for their own interests. And their actions are particularly perilous because once their deceit is unveiled, they undermine the public's trust in the educated leadership. Do y'all hear me? You see, what I, you see where this is going? Once, you, once the, the masses who look up to you and rely on you because your degree realize that you full of shit, it undermines the public's trust in the educated leadership. Here we go. Now this disillusionment, it can lead to a dangerous precedent where the mob rule, somebody type mob rule mentality, somebody type mob rule mentality, History shows us in events like the French Revolution where intellectuals and leaders were overthrown by the disillusioned masses. Look at the Cultural Revolution in China, which saw similar distrust and the overthrow of the educated class. Hell, look at the post-World War Wyman Republic in Germany, Germany, where they had the loss of faith in the traditional elites, and that contributed to the rise of the Third Reich, which is by all means <laughs> the epitome of extremism. Now, what were they complaining about? Let's, y'all with me, am I y'all with me? I want to make sure I ain't lose nobody. Y'all catch up, catch up. Let me get the jelly jar so y'all can catch up. Hit the number one button. Hit the number one button, catch up. Let me know you're here. I need another eight, uh, another nine super chats, by the way. The cash app is below. Let me know, yeah, catch up. Catch up. A little jelly jar break. Now, 
What were the people complaining about as to the traditional elites? Well, one of their primary grievances, and when you take all of these, the, the Cultural Revolution in China, the French Revolution, and, 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 the, and, and the, the, Weimar, uh, the Weimar Republic in Germany, post-World War I, one thing they were saying was that the elites were benefiting at the expense of the common people because they were taking their money. Lying to the people about what they were going to do with their money. Have y'all heard that before? Hmm? They take your money and tell you we're going to do something for you and don't do it. And you give it to them because they're a PhD. Huh? Can y'all hear me? Hmm? Somebody say, hmm? <laughs> Can somebody spell hunt? That was one thing. So you take our money, you say you're going to do this thing for us, and you don't do it. Okay. Right? Another one. They felt that they didn't represent the common man. They felt that the educated class didn't represent the interests of the common man. And instead, the things they were saying served them. Do these educated simps represent what the common man thinks about the common black community and the relationships between black men and black women? Do they? Huh? Here's a good one for you. The intellectuals and the leaders prior to those uprisings played the role of suppressing dissent through censorship, the control of information, and sometimes even through direct, direct involvement or in support of the oppressive political regime that silenced opposition. I want you to listen to me. The oppressive political regime. What oppressive political regime have black folks been dealing with in this country? Come on. Come on. Did you do your homework? What oppressive political regime do black folks complain about all the time in this country? Huh? Huh? What do we complain about in this country all the time? We complain about the system of White survivalism, don't we? Or as Dr. Francis Cress Wilson would say, the system of white supremacy racism. And what's the job of white supremacy racism? What is it the best? What does it do the best? Huh? It keeps us divided. It keeps us divided. And what are these educated simps doing by pitting, by feeding black women these lies and telling them that the black man is your problem? The black man is, we, oh, the black man, all oh, these black men hitting you with the brick. And even if I find out that no black man actually hit you with the brick, I'm still going to blame black, black men because I want to bring the light to the fact that, uh, uh, you know, black men are the bad guys. So you're doing the, you're doing the devil's work. You're doing the work of white supremacy. You're keeping black men down and you're keeping us divided. You don't think black men recognize that? You don't think we see that now? You don't think that's what this brother was so angry about? Huh? When he starts saying, shut your bitch ass up. Excuse the language. You don't think that's why he was angry? Huh? Shut your bitch ass up. Huh? Another thing that they were complaining about. The elites were frequently accused of being out of touch with the struggles of ordinary people, particularly in times of economic hardship, famine and social unrest, famine and social unrest, and failing to take effect, effective action. These educated simps. Do you think they understand what the average black man is dealing with in this misandrous dating world, 
He telling you to date and marry these uh, baby mamas. They telling you to date and marry these women who've been out of touch. Your own mama, if she loves you, wouldn't have you do it. But this is what this man is saying. Do you think they know what you're dealing with? Do they even care? Why would they set you up for that trap? Here's another one. Somebody say higher moral, uh, say a higher moral ground. Say somebody say maintain the moral high ground. This is why these revolutionaries happen. The revolutions happen. There was a perceived moral and cultural degradation. The masses criticized the elite for promoting and embodying moral, uh, uh, for not promoting and embodying uh, uh, moral values that were traditional. What they saw amongst the elite was degeneracy. Listen. Somebody say conscious stripper in the chat room. Somebody say Sukiana in the chat room. That's degeneracy embodied. That's not what the average black man wants. We don't want to marry a 304. We don't want to wife up some 43-year-old baby, baby mama. We don't want to deal with strippers, not like that. We don't want gold diggers who stop dating you in college, go out there, have a whole life, and then pick you up after she's old and great with some kids and let you play the role of stepdaddy. That's, we don't want that, Dr. Boyce. Another thing they did, they used their intellectualism to justify their foolish rhetoric. They have these philosophical justifications to maintain their social position. They got to be right. Did you hear what Dr. Johnson said? Well, even if she was lying, and we don't know it, even though she is going to plead guilty, unless she wants 10 years, uh, I'm still not going to apologize to black men for helping damage our reputation. Got to be right. Another thing they did, and this is a big one, they, they, they manipulated the ideology or national sentiment, nationalist sentiments. These thought leaders, these intellectuals. They wanted, they, 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 their causes, you know, they, they ultimately, they, and they manipulated people's nationalism. Yeah, we love our country to serve their interests rather than the common good. This so-called love for black women that they have, protecting black women, sounds good. They rally, oh yeah, that's our support, that's my black nationalism. But at the end of the day, you teaching black men, black women, it's okay to bash black men and to down the very men who are here to protect you. These people don't have any idea what brothers are dealing with or what brothers want because they're alienated from the culture uh, 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 and there's a disconnect. Even though they know what's going on, they see it. Brothers don't want to. Brothers, they have no idea what the average black man wants. Brothers want peace of mind and happiness. That's why 51% of you aren't married and don't have children. And you got a large contingency of you doing the passport bro thing. Somebody type passport bro in the chat room. And let me tell you what black women want. A lot of them want to live their thought life until they can't anymore. A lot of them want to put that thing out there in them streets until they can't. They want their freedom. They also want their children, but they don't want to get married. They had their kids out of wedlock. You didn't know that? And you keep trying to push black men to get married to women that don't want to marry them. Yeah, when they get 43, they want to get married. That's so they can lock you down and use you as a credit card. Anybody in them streets knows that.
but they would swear up and down that black men don't want to marry black women. Why you got all these thousands and thousands of black men traveling around the world looking for wives if they didn't want to get married? Why are there more black men married than black women if they don't want to get married? You say black men are responsible for these children out of wedlock. Black men have less children than black women have given birth to. <clears throat> Look, those among us who are genuinely learned bear a profound responsibility to confront and challenge these architects of this divisive gender war rhetoric. And that's why I'm jumping in it. It's not that I particularly don't like Dr. Umar Johnson. I don't know him. It's not that I don't like Dr. Boyce Watkins. I don't know him. Even Steve Harvey or that other boy, a young man, uh, uh, Derek Jackson. I don't know these men. I recognize that their divisive gender war rhetoric is going to force, is, is, is going to make the masses of black people not trust black folks who are educated. Anytime you got a black man with a PhD saying this, let me let you look at real. Because an alien visited me in Jacksonville, North Carolina. I'm in Jacksonville, Florida right now, but I used to live in Jacksonville, North Carolina. This, I'm this in is Jacksonville, your PhD? Florida right now, but I used to live in Jacksonville, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And when I was in the third grade, this is your thought leader right here. North Carolina, nine years old, eight years old, me and my mother were looking out the window. You understand what I'm saying? UFO. In this is, these are your thought leaders. So more. And this is what happens when you they stop believing you. The root of what he was saying. So I think Dr. Umar means well oftentimes, but I do think that in an effort to be so pro-black, sometimes uh, you sacrifice some uh, common sense for the sake of sound bites, you know, and, and, and what sounds good to people. This is what the common people are saying about our black intellectuals. See, here's the thing, brothers. If we fail to address the reckless and, and, and uh, the reckless blame assigned to black men, absolving black women of any accountability, then we risk a societal regression led by delusionment with the educated and knowledgeable. And this could potentially usher in an era dominated by ignorance where decisions are made not by enlightened reasoning, but by the whims of any uninformed majority. And it's incumbent upon the educated and the informed to lead with integrity, ensuring that our discourse fosters understanding and unity rather than division and strife. I'm going to keep speaking the truth. I'm going to keep speaking the truth about black men. That's not division. That's truth speaking. Because, see, the failure to do that not only betrays our duties as custodians of knowledge, but it also risks plunging black society into darkness. Guided by the most regressive instincts of the unenlightened black masses. Let me say that again. If the custodians of knowledge, the black leaders among us, the intelligentsia, if we don't fulfill our duty, then the masses become disillusioned with us and they will be guided by the most regressive instincts of the unenlightened black masses, which for you all who ain't caught up, is what we see happening right now. Hello? Hello? The current trajectory within black society underscores that pivotal concern that I'm having. It's the gradual erosion of foundational values and the distancing from intellectual and moral leadership that once 
guided our community. This is why we were progressive. Look throughout our history. We were always led by the intellectuals. We respected intelligence, education, thoughtfulness. And then we became disillusioned. Look at the black church. Somebody type black church in the chat room. Look at the black church. Historically, the black church was a cornerstone of the black community and activism. Now it's perceived as prioritizing materialism over spiritual and communal enrichment. I wonder how that could happen. Why do we stop trusting the church? Somebody tell me in the chat room. You see the preacher pulling up in a Cadillac that's brand new every year. And the preacher's wife pulling up in the Cadillac that looked just like his. And they got a big house. And they fleecing the flock. You got a man on the internet saying he's building a school. He's been building a school 14 to 15 years. And you don't see a school. But come to find out, he's been hanging out with conscious strippers. The people get disillusioned. Look at the transformation of entities like the back of the Black Panther Party for self-defense. It was once revered for their grassroots activism and empowerment and its initiatives. That school lunch program, that was started by the Black Panther Power. The only reason they came up with a school lunch program by the government is to counteract the Black Panther Party. Them boys was up there passing out free food in Oakland for the kids. The kids showed up. So they said, J. Edgar Hoover said, we got to undermine this. So I want the schools to start passing out free lunch. So they'll have to come to our school and they won't be there getting indoctrinated in the morning by the Black Panthers. We started that. And so now these same so-called revolutionaries, revolutionary figures, now they work within the political establishment. The senator that took the place of Barack, uh, the senator that Barack Obama took the place of, he was a Black Panther. How you go from being a Black Panther to going to being a politician? It raises questions about the authenticity and dedication to their original principles. Sexy Red and Cardi B are celebrated for their music and their personas that often highlight themes of excess materialism and sexual liberation gone wrong. Now, what are we talking about? We talking about the intellectual moral leadership that once guided the black community. We talking about the people feeling betrayed by the custodians of knowledge which has now plunged black society into the darkness guided by the most regressive instincts of the unenlightened black masses. Somebody say sexy red. Somebody say Sukiana. Are you getting where I'm coming from? You got politicians lined up to speak to Cardi B. You got our black intellectuals saying, yeah, I'll go deal with uh, Sukiana. That's a stark contrast to the teachings and the legacies of intellectual giants like Dr. Francis Cress Wilson and Dr. Amos Wilson. Some of y'all don't even know those people. Dr. Wilson with her profound analysis of race. Dr. Wilson with his insights into psychological and economic frameworks affecting black communities. 
That represents the depth of thought and commitment to upliftment. That's increasingly overlooked by the younger generations. Why? Because they don't respect the intellectuals. Because we got people like Dr. Umar Johnson out there simping. And so the custodians of knowledge have calls for black society to be plunged into darkness and is being guided by the most regressive instincts of the unenlightened black masses. They're stealing, rampant fornication, sexual diseases, Yeah. So we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Y'all hit the number one button. I need you guys to give me six more super chats. And uh, that will be appreciative if you'll help me pay for my time. I'll be right back. Y'all hit the number. I want to see you win. And I put pressure on us black, on us men to understand how we did not get our masculinity training and we've been doing our work. Okay. But now it's time for you ladies to understand you're going to have to bet on us. Like you want us to bet on you. I talked to, I talked to several men this week. I don't just get on here and talk shit. I have men I call around the world and I ask, what do you think about this concept? Level set me. Shout out to brother uh, Dennis Spurley. Dennis, I'm not going to get, I don't want to tell people's business, but I'm going to tell you, high value men retire their women or make them come work for them. So ladies, what is it going to take for you to free yourself? Because you and I both know you're dying at these jobs. You're in the the saddest part in 2000. 24 is that men toxic men have made you think that you are a bad person for walking away from bullshit he gonna make you that's not the saddest part of 2024 son the saddest part is that you are still out here in these sipping streets with this bullshit we not doing this no more shut your bitch ass up with this sipping shit in 2024 we all about empowering men making men better we not gonna keep dragging men through the dirt to make women feel good about themselves. The playing field is even, nigga. I don't know where you living at, son. Women are just as bad as men, and we don't need no more bitch-ass niggas out here caping for women, son. We got enough platforms, enough dudes, enough women out here constantly shitting on men. We about to start empowering men and get you simp niggas the fuck up out of here, son. It's 2024. Shut your bitch ass up, nigga. let him have it didn't he shout out to that brother whoever he is man he, speaking the truth you, you can't avoid the truth man shout out to him um so you guys still with me are we learning something are we picking up something here are we learning here because that's the most important thing um look basically what i'm saying brothers is that and, and of course you know the title of this is ending the era of educated simps when the masses start seeing the educated leadership and the so-called intellectuals and leaders, the traditional elites, the educated class, and they recognize that you're full of shit, fellas, right? When black society begins to recognize that their, their leaders are full of shit, we teeter on the, ca- uh, on the brink of chaos. Trust evaporates. And with it, the very fabric that holds communities together unravels. People feeling duped and delusioned. They turn away from reasoned debate and informed decisions, making, instead, they lean into raw, unfiltered, uh, uh, populist fear. What, they just say stuff. The mistrust sees the ground for division, where every fact is questioned and, and, and the conspiracy takes root, pushing society into a, a spiral conflict and regression, led by the loudest voices in the room rather than the wisest. You want to know why you can't tell black women nothing? Because they've heard some intellectual totally say something that they don't even believe. So what we have is a vacuum of credibility. The pursuit of knowledge becomes tainted and society's progress stalls. 
It's ensnared by the regressive instincts of those who've lost their faith. It's important that the educated in, uh, amongst us within the black community, you need to reclaim and reassert your role as custodians of knowledge. You need to be guides towards enlightenment. And this involves promoting the legacies of great thinkers like Dr. Wilson, Dr. Wilson, but also engaging with people in ways that resonate with their experiences and, and, and aspirations. It requires a concerted effort to bridge the gap between the allure of uh, this gender war and the conflict that involves and unity. But that's going to require principled leadership. Again, this challenge ahead is not insurmountable. It's not. We're at a crossroads. We can choose to go forward on the same path and be eliminated from this country as a political power and as a people. But if we change path and we take a path towards honesty, integrity, and genuine commitment to understanding and addressing the real issues that divide us, we can make it. So what we need to do is we need to get the bridge builders in work as opposed to those who are willing to keep widening the gap. So let's choose to dialogue. Let's have decent, orderly dialogue. Because, see, there are those who've made a career of manipulating these sensitive issues that black folks face in black society. And I ask those people to consider reflection and change. Today we start a new narrative. Y'all hit the number one button. We focus on building ourselves up, on creating spaces where men can prosper without fear of just criticism. It's about fostering a conversation that lifts black men up instead of tearing us down. As we step into 2024, let's pledge to leave behind the counterproductive uh, behaviors that have held us back. We're embracing a future where we empower black men, recognizing the unique hurdles that black men face and tackling them with bravery, dignity, and mutual respect. This is us, brothers. The time for change is now. Let's stand united in our cause. It makes this year the start of a new chapter in the movement for black men, a chapter where we redefine what it means to be a black man in a society that has gone a long way to try to disempower us. And we need to address those men with these counterproductive devices messages that they spew into the black community like so much toxic waste. Especially those black men who aim to undermine the worth of black men and our status. This requires a multifaceted approach. One that requires unity, understanding, and mutual respect. The following is the list of uh, things that I think that black men can employ to discredit those men who spew that divisive rhetoric. Something that will help foster a more inclusive, empowering dialogue. What's up first? Promote positive representation of black men. Amplify the voices and stories of black men who embody positive attributes such as integrity, responsibility, and respect for both themselves and womanhood. Let's highlight the black men who contribute positively to their communities. That'll help counteract the negative stereotypes. Another thing we can do, brothers, something I do on this page, 
Let's engage in constructive dialogue. Let's create spaces like this for open and respectful conversations about black men and the issues that we face. And then we can talk about gender relationships within the black community. We want to encourage discussions that acknowledge the complexity of the issues that we as a black society deal with and seek to understand different perspectives without resorting to the divisive rhetoric that you hear spewed from these simps. We need to share accurate information. Somebody write accurate in the chat room. Somebody write educate and inform. Somebody write accurate information in the chat room. No more of these negative stereotypes. We need to share accurate information and resources about the contributions of black men to society, not just to black society, but to the national, uh, to, the, to, 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 to American society. Education can counteract this misinformation and these stereotypes being perpetrated by black men about black men and also by black women. It can also provide a more nuanced understanding of the gender dynamic. The other thing we can do, support black men's empowerment. Actively support initiatives that empower black men and black boys. Demonstrating that raising the status of black men does not require lowering the worth of black women. And we can show solidarity with issues that black women face. We can work towards a common goal that benefits the entire community, but we don't have to crap on black men to do it. And we shouldn't let anybody do that. The other thing you brothers have to do, just what you saw this young, these two young brothers do here. In the videos I showed earlier, we got to challenge these divisive narratives. Speak out against individuals and platforms that perpetuate these divisive messages about black men. Use facts and reason arguments to challenge these negatives and expose their harmful impacts on black men and the black community at large. Here's another one. And this is a big one. Foster female accountability. Somebody type accountability in the chat room. Somebody type accountability in the chat room. We, brothers, have to encourage self-reflection and accountability among black women for actions that contribute to the issues faced by black women in black society. They may not like it, but you have to keep doing it. The other thing we have to do, we got to promote and reward genuine femininity amongst black women in the black community. If you see a woman dressed feminine, looking feminine, talking feminine, exuding femininity, you've got to reward her. I'm not talking about some thought that's half dressed. I'm talking about true femininity. You reward what you want to see in black women. The other thing we need to do, we need to address the misandry within the black community. And we need to hold those women accountable for their misandry. And that's going to help build a stronger and more respectful relationship between black men and black women. Another thing, and I don't mind doing this, we have to collaborate with women thought leaders, partner with women thought leaders and organizations within the community to address mutual concerns. This collaboration can help build some bridges and dispel myths about this so-called gender competition. It's not a competition. 
We're not in competition. I'm not in competition with these other folks, these ladies on YouTube. What what are their names? Huh? Huh? Crimson Cure. She's definitely a thought leader. Headed in the right direction. Married woman, been married. Always goes out of her way to address Miss Sandry. I'd love to see her and Dr. T T Hassan Johnson. Have a conversation. That's a step right there. The other thing we need to do is engage in mentorship programs that guide young black men towards positive self-identity and respect for self and understanding what a healthy gender relation, a healthy relationship is with the opposite gender. The same thing for black women. They need mentorship programs so that they can learn to respect for themselves and respect respect for black men and masculinity. As opposed to always saying I'm strong, independent, and don't need a man. Teach them the importance of masculinity, the importance of manhood. As all as opposed to always uplifting uh, this false notion of femininity and independence that they have. The other thing we need to do, brothers, we need to celebrate each other. Celebrate our achievements. The achievements of our sons. That can help undermine the zero-sum mentality that that one gender uh, is better than the other. You begin to flood the internet with black male success. Boom. The picture's worth a thousand words. The proof is in the pudding. And let me say this, and this is going to hurt some feelings. Lead by example. Lead by example. Lead by principles that respect and value the contributions of black men. Don't cheat on your wife. Don't cheat on your girlfriend. If you got an agreement that you're going to be a good and more upstanding man, do that. Lead by example. Maintain the moral high ground. That's being... Focus on being upstanding human beings. Start treating these lovely ladies that deserve to be treated with respect, treat them with respect, and leave them 304s alone. You deal with 304s between the hours of three and four. Don't bring them out in the street. See, your personal behavior exemplifies equality and respect and partnership. That's what you want. And that's a power counter narrative to divisiveness. Malcolm X was married. Married one woman, stayed married. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan was married. Had one woman, stayed married to that one woman. They understood that principle of lead by example. That's why we see them as authentic. So many others out there. But by adopting these strategies, black men can play a crucial role in undermining and discrediting the divisive messages being uh, uh, fostering, uh, uh, being put out there by these simps, both educated and uneducated. We put that out in the ethos. And that'll help counteract these neg- ner- narratives. Now that said, <laughs> y'all still with me? Yeah? Still with me? 
I'm gonna run a quick commercial. I'll be right back. Y'all hit the number one button. It's Uncle D, man. Love y'all. There you go. Uh-huh, I like that clap. Looking at myself as I would see myself in the future. Looking up at my father, looking at his face and seeing my face. People are so inclined to believe that black men are deadbeat fathers. The f*** else you need? I'm the black boogeyman villain that just came on. Something going wrong, I'm the one you put the blame on. Community is f***ed up, shame on me. Deadbeat daddy put the blame on me. Black men actually enable the very thing that they hate. Woo! So by now, everybody has heard about the CDC uh, research uh, that was done, that black men are going around using that as their safe place to prove to everybody that they are excellent fathers and they are the most involved fathers of any other demographic. Shut your ass up! Shut your ass up! You put the game on me when I'm the best father. All the pain I see telling me to try harder. Broke in, I'm dusty, no deodorant, I'm musty. I'm the ball guy for the race when you getting busted. Stand up and be a man when your women want the role. Want the leadership, the money, run the f household. Be as naked as a child, and I supposed to smile. You the reason why the neighborhood kids running wild. Karma comes around, baby, keep your cookie. Matter of fact, I'm on a flight, you can pass that shit to Pookie. Chicago back to Houston, New York, we deem this useless. Baby, I'm in DR, and mommy serving juices. Every movie needs a bad guy. Why not be the black guy? Shit, you can hang out with me. You need a scapegoat. Point us out and take no shit. You know they gonna hang out with me. When you need a reason and the ladies commit treason, all you gotta do is hang out with me. Your daddies and your uncles and your nephews, that's the most. Just watch the whole world hang it on me. You to blame for this crisis, you to blame for this ISIS yeah. Paper saver, got creators favored, who you think gon' die for being righteous? Ooh. Who gon' vote for the oppressor? Me. Who pay most to get the lesser? Uh. You handing out all of the treasures, the immigrants getting the blessings Who you think rapping is real? Yeah. What my opinion about this kill? Uh. I'm not Arab, homie, how did this feel? Yeah. Cause I'm not living off in this real nah. My opinion, no matter, we get a sh deal No reparation, just sh meal I'm only speaking about what we feel Keep talking the talk, I need a refill Every movie needs a bad guy, why not be the black guy? Shit. You don't need a scapegoat, pointers out to take no shit. You know they gonna hang it on me. When you need a reason and you ladies commit treason, all you gotta do is hang it on me. Your daddies and your uncles and your nephews, that's a must watch the whole world. Hang it on me. Every movie needs a black guy. Why not be the black guy? You can hang it on me. When you need a scapegoat, point us out and take no shit. No, they gonna hang it on me. Fathers are underappreciated. Those of you guys who don't know, my name is Dennis Sperlin. Uh, also known as Uncle D, affectionately by the young fellas out there. And of course, the Blizzard King. <laughs> Nevertheless, um, or should I say, um, I'm an attorney, I'm a podcaster, and I'm also, my favorite title is that of father. Um, but I'm going to take the opportunity today to really talk to you guys about fatherhood. Black man hit me up being like, yo, I can't wait to be a dad, I can't wait to be a father. And I feel like I owe those young men to tell them, like, bro, this is hard because it exposes things about you that you don't know about yourself. It exposes all of your insecurities. And it's a huge emotional undertaking. Bro, when you see this and me playing with my baby and it looks really cool and you want to have those moments, just know that that's the upside. It comes with a downside and it can be incredibly painful. So before you take on the family, bro, go see somebody about your past and go see somebody about the trauma that you've endured throughout the course of your life and start healing. Because if you don't heal from that, 
You have all this and you'll never be happy. Especially anybody who thinks that you can just pour water over a lady and a baby and have a happy family overnight. This ain't no pill, man. I mean, you I hope you all have subscribed to the channel by now. We will read all of the super chats shortly. All the super chats, we're going to read them in a minute. Y'all make sure y'all hit the thumbs up button. Make sure you become a member. I'm looking for two more, two more super chats. Let's get two more super chats out the way. I want to ahead and go ahead and proceed. I know y'all going to take care of me. Two more super chats is all we need. Uh, I'm not begging. I'm just asking you to pay me for my time. If you learn something, pay me for my time. If you feel like You've been educated. We talked about Rome. We talked about the French Revolution. We talked about the Arab Spring. And I put things in historical context for you so that you can begin to learn. Because again, as I say all the time, history doesn't repeat itself, but it definitely has a mirror. Okay. It definitely has a shadow. All right. Nevertheless, folks, um, we're stepping into 2024. We're here to have a, uh, we're here to take stock of the road we've traveled. A road that had its share bumps, but also brought us to closer together. We uh, we had some real talk about what's going, what it's going to take to build a black society where every black man is lifted up, where dignity and respect aren't just fancy words, but the real deal. We hit on some crucial. We hit on some some things that are crucial here today. This whole business of of dragging black men right to lift up black women we're not doing that that's not doing anyone any favors okay it's not it's not we've been clear about ditching the negativity that's been pulling us down and throwing shade on men that doesn't get us anywhere all it does is make your men want to hop on the airplane and go somewhere else where they celebrate it. We all got flaws. We all have flaws. But pointing fingers isn't the way forward. It's about stepping up and owning your own stuff and growing together, ladies. Let me say that again. It's about stepping up and owning your own stuff and growing ladies. We also took a hard look at the noise out there on social media, the news, all these anti-black male mis uh, misandrous platforms that have been stirring up drama. It's time to switch gears focus on what brings us together not what tears us apart and let me tell you we're done with the simp mentality it's a wrap that's been holding black men back we're about setting a new standard when will we elevate black men and our black communities and black society so let's talk about the culture for a minute. We've seen too much of our youth caught up in the flash and the glitter, chasing after what these celebrities and so-called influencers are selling. But what about the giants whose shoulders we stand on? Dr. Francis Crest Wilson, Dr. Amos Wilson, Dr. John Heinrich Clark. all the other great brilliant people folks who laid down the ground to work for our wisdom and insight and all those other people all those unknown professors and lawyers and doctors who help keep the black and engineers hell the truck drivers the plumbers all these people who built houses and communities and towns and schools It's on us to make sure their legacies aren't drowned out by the latest hit a trend from Sukiana, a sexy red. 
So what's the game plan? What is the game plan? We're, we're going to champion the kind of talk and action that builds bridges, not walls. We're going to celebrate the wins that black men achieve together. Because that's where our real strength lies. Leading by example, holding ourselves and each other accountable in a fair way. That's how we're going to forge a future that's about mutual respect and understanding. Looking ahead, we're not just moving into a new year. We're marching towards a new chapter. A chapter where every single one of us, every single black man is empowered, standing tall, our integrity, our unity, our respect for each other, shining through. It's about lighting the way with wisdom, not getting lost in the shadows of division. I want to thank each and every one of you brothers for being a part of this journey that I've been on for the past several years. Thank you for your insight, your dedication to making this vision a reality. So let's roll up our sleeves and get to work, crafting a future that pays homage to the true worth of every person in our community. So here's to it. As far as you simps, whether you be educated or not, the exploitation has to end because we see you. Somebody type, we see you in the chat room. We see you. Somebody talk to the simps. All the educated simps. I heard some somebody uh, show Dr. Umar Johnson shake it for a simp. We see you. You can't be my brother if you're destroying our community with your divisive words. We see you. Somebody say that we see you. The brothers see you. You understand? Yes, up with this. Huh? We not doing this no more. Shut your bitch ass up with this simp and shit in 2024. We all about empowering men, making men better. We're not going to keep dragging men through the dirt to we make women you. feel good about themselves. The playing field is even, nigga. I don't know where you living at, son. Dr. Boyce Walker, we see you. We're as men, and we don't need no more bitch-ass niggas out here caping for women, son. We got enough platforms, enough dudes. Derek enough Jackson, out here we see you. Shitting on men. We about to start empowering men and get you simp niggas to fuck Lamar up Johnson, here, we son. see you. It's 2024. Shut your bitch ass up, nigga. They see you, brother. It's one educated man to another. They see you. It's not going to work anymore. The ending, we are ending the era of educated simps. Period. Nevertheless, Big shout out to uh, uh, Jerome Payne. Thank you so much for the 199. Shout out to Boris Barracuda. Thank you, uh, Mr. 43TX. Great message tonight. Thanks, bro. O Dog Cosby. Appreciate you. Donnell Mecca Booker. He said, for the collection, play, stay positive, stay focused, brother. Stay on course. We went in. Somebody type, we went in in the chat room. 43TX. Celebrate each other, brother. Uh, Black in today. Blame it on me. <laughs> shout out to my man, uh, Big Bass Life. Also, Broken Blade said, thank you, as always, for your work. Yes, sir. No problem. All praises to the most high. Officially, Kobe, simp gurus are going out of business. Yes, they are. Big shout out to Black in the Day who gifted Dennis Perilla membership. Hey, man, it's okay. Go give some memberships to all these folks, man. Go gift it to them. It's only $1.99 or something like that. Pray for us, wisdom, discipline, Black chemistry engineer. Shout out to my engineers. Shout out to all my blue-collar brothers. Who else we got? Greg Lemon Jr. Salute to you, Uncle D and the brothers that are turning tuning in tonight thank you for empowering yes sir that's what i do uh greg let me salute uh, let me see here brandon jackson thank you for the super sticker my man jay rare jay renard leonard i'm starting the show from the beginning but here's to uncle d thank you so much brother appreciate the solo dolo says uh lewis we just said you're speaking facts brother divide and conquer is their strategy neither democrats nor republicans care about us every leader who tries to unite blacks black families 
that divide. Yeah, no, there's only ones that stay around are the ones that keep us divided. Keep that in mind. You simps are doing the devil's work. Y'all doing white supremacy's work. Uncle D, I'm trying to purchase your book. How do I do it? Email me at spurlingdennis at gmail.com. Email me at spurlingdennis at gmail.com and I'll send you a set. You just got to make the payment. So just do that. Learn ya down with the Symphonia. That's right, man. Symphonia. Who else we got? Chris, 1911. You're more like my brother than my uncle. Keep up the good work. No problem, brother. Shout out to the Passport Bros. Laverne Gibbs, thank you for the $5. DJ Broken Dusty, please keep up the good work. I shall. Mark Freelancer, thank you. Selvin King, send me some clips from your show. Man, you're welcome to use whatever you see, man. It's up, it's up here for you. Blizzard King, back. Yep. Other than that, man, thank you guys so much. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. Uh, shout out to everybody who came through, man. I appreciate you guys. Other than that, as I always say at this time, it's about time for me to roll on up out of here. I say, uh, uh, what do I say? Hold on a minute. I can't remember. Can I remember? Oh, oh, I don't say anything. I just say, this is Uncle D, and I'm out. Mm -hmm.